Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Welcome to breakfast. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belong to you, Jesus. My God. My hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My hallelujah belong to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You deserve it. You deserve it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. My hallelujah belong to you. Good morning, good morning, welcome. My hallelujah belong to you, Jesus. Good morning and welcome to breakfast. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My hallelujah belong to you, Daddy Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and bless the Lord with me. Because he deserve it. He deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. He deserve it. My hallelujah. Your hallelujah. Our hallelujah belong to Jesus. And all the glory belong to him. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. My name is Rev. Joyce Lynn Radigan. Go ahead and begin to share. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and begin to share. Thank you. All of the glory belong to you, Jesus. Yes, we have to share it. Let us share it, people of God. He deserve it. He deserve it. From the bottom of our heart, he deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. He deserved the glory. He deserved the praise. He deserved the honor. He deserved to be adored. Let us adore him. He des Yes, let us adore him this morning because he deserved it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Somebody worship him with me. I need some help to worship God this morning. He deserve it. He deserve it. Somebody go ahead and share. He deserve it. Thank you, Jesus. He deserve it. Go ahead and begin to share people of God. You know the groups that you go to. You know the different pages that you go to. So I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. The table is set and all ready to go. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome all. Welcome all. Come as you are. Let us pray. Come and join me in prayer. Come and adore him. Let us adore him. Oh, come and let us adore Jesus Christ. Yes, let us adore him. He deserve it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to breakfast with Jesus. The table is set. My God, I hope you are hungry. Jesus. I hope you came hungry. You're in the comfort of your home of your workplace you have your corner you don't have to worry that we go this is virtual church amen yes because a lot of people don't get to go into the buildings anymore based on age and underlying issues so this is virtual church let us adore him 
Good morning. Welcome. God bless you all. I see some new face. So once again, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Rev. Joyce Lynn Radigan and welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. I know sometimes I sound like a broken record, but there are a lot of people that are coming. They are not even coming on the live. They are watching from afar and they don't know who this woman is. I came to tell her and the devil knows it too. And it's time for you to receive your breakthrough. So I encourage you to join us in prayer. Come in agreement with us in prayer. It's the beginning of the year. Let us lay down some rules. The devil have been winning for too long. Yes, the devil have been winning far too long. So now we're going to set down some ground rules. It's a new year and it's a new life. My God, COVID-19 didn't take us out. So now we have a chance to repent. No, we, this gives us an opportunity to repent. This gives us the opportunity to bless the Lord. This gives us the opportunity to do the things that God told us to do that we were ignoring. This time in our life, it gives us the opportunity is presenting itself to us so we can be obedient to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I welcome you all. Good morning. Go ahead and begin to share. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to share. Don't worry about who is not here yet. People are saying that they are not no they are no longer receiving notifications that when I'm live they don't get it. Go ahead and share. It's cold like crazy here. The car is covered with ice. I can't get up this morning. So I'm just going to come to you from the comfort. I call it comfort, the comfort of my home. I like when I'm in the car on the street up in the yes only the birds can can see me hallelujah and crawling i'm saying it because i i am very very content up in the wilderness if you read the bible carefully when john came he was in the wilderness when jesus came he was in the wilderness well yes when elijah was here he was mostly in the wilderness Listen to me, people of God. There are some things that will happen when you're in the wilderness that will never happen when you're out in society. There are some, some ideas that will come when you're in the wilderness that we will, it will never present itself to you when you are out in society among friends and family. So I encourage you, spend more time with God. Spend... <laughs> It's not like you're selfish. Spend more time with God. That's it. I came today to tell you, spend more time with God. I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I encourage you, people of God, to go ahead and begin to share. I, I, I came to pray for some people this morning. Yes. The Lord sent me here to pray for some people. I'm here in obedience. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Instagram. Good morning, Facebook and YouTube. People of God, remember, we need more subscribers to this YouTube channel that we have, right? It is Rev. Joyce Lynn Radigan. That's it. We need more subscribers. So I encourage you to subscribe. Don't just go there and watch. Just subscribe. Don't just share it. Subscribe to it as well. Amen. I think they are blocking me from sharing. So I encourage you to go ahead and share. Facebook is giving me a hard time when it comes to sharing. Good morning. Welcome, Sister Tessa Palmer. Good morning. The Lord loves you. And you know, the Lord said He's going to also bless you in Jamaica. 
I don't know the situation. I'm asking him what's going on. He's, the Lord said, Sister Tessa Palmer, the Lord said I should tell you he is going to bless you in Jamaica. Let us pray, people of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you. My God, as some people are still fasting, Heavenly Father, as they present themselves and their bodies to you as a living sacrifice. My God, I ask you today in the name of Jesus Christ to remember them and your family. Remember our situation, Lord, that we bring to you daily. We present it to you daily, O oh God. We are expecting returns. We are expecting turnarounds. We are expecting things to turn in our favor. My God, we ask right now that you change the heart of some people who are in authority above us. People that we look up to. My God, we are asking for favor. Hallelujah. We are asking, oh God, for favor in your sight and in the sight of man. Thank you, Jesus. We humbly come before you this hour. We cry out to you, O oh God. We're waiting on you, Jesus. We are waiting on you, Lord, for our story to change. There is none like you, Lord. It doesn't matter who is fighting against us. It doesn't matter who is fighting against our prosperity. It will never happen. And so, Lord, we give you thanks in advance for the things you're getting ready to do in the life of our children and in our home, and in our ministry, and in our f workplace, oh God, mighty God, in our business, we give you praise for the turnaround in our financial life. Our financial situation is changing, and Lord God, we say thank you. We decree and we declare it done. We're speaking with confidence today. We are speaking with authority today and power. We are speaking today, O oh God, according to your word. It said, declare a thing and it shall be established. And therefore, Lord, we come boldly to the throne. And Abba Father, we say thank you. It is done. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever the situation is, the roadblock, the setback, the hurdle, we say it is done. We say thanks in advance. As we lift our hands in one accord and bless your name this hour. We say thank you daddy for what you get ready to do. Some of the things that we purpose in our heart. It's about to come to pass because we are walking in confidence and power and victory. My God we know who we serve. We are living lives of favor because we know who we are. My God, we thank you for the spirit of boldness and confidence to know who we are in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you and we bless your name because you are good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endureth throughout all the generations. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, go ahead and begin to share. I just want to say I thank God for your life, for each and every one of you that, you know, show up. Thank God for your life and the life of your family and your ministry and your walk with God. Your spiritual walk is important. Your spiritual walk is very important. I love the book of Isaiah. Where Isaiah was sent to minister to Ezekiah. All Ezekiah did was present his spiritual walk to God. He could not walk anymore because he was sick unto death. So your spiritual walk is very important. Because this is all that you will have when it's time to pray. This is all you will have when it's time to go to the Lord. Because when you go to the Lord in prayer, he's going to ask you, what do you want from me? So you're going to present your spiritual walk and say, Lord, I am walking right before you. I am honest. I'm walking in truth and obedience. When God speak to us, hallelujah, when God speak to us, we are supposed to be obedient. So when trouble come, we can say, Lord, you told me to do this and I did it. 
I was honest in my doings. I was honest with my scale. I was not a thief. I stopped the things that I used to do in the moment I gave my life to you, Lord. So when problem comes, when problem comes, we know how to go to God in prayer. When you call pastor and pastor phone is dead, when sometimes you call a number and it's going to voicemail, it's because the phone is dead. It's not because they are ignoring your call. The phone is dead. They have been praying for other people all night. So the phone died. So I came to talk to somebody here today. Stay prayed up. And do the right thing. So when trouble comes, you know how to go to God. You know what to say. You are, al you are already scripted. You learn so much from this platform. So you don't need nobody to help you to fight warfare in your house. You don't need nobody to pray with you when trouble come late at night. When the warfare come up. When the devil rise up against you in your house late at night. 2 a.m. 5 a.m. You need to pray. You need to remember your prayer points. My God, you need, to, you need to use what you learn. Apply it to your life. The other day, I, w I, w I went someplace. And I was talking with a woman of God. And uh, a, a phone call came in. And it came in from someone that was deported. And all I heard her say to him, which is a great thing. She said, listen to me. You are in Christ. Whatever you learn in the United States of America, apply that to your life. You will make it. Some people came to America once and they said, I don't have to come back because now I see how the thing works. Somebody said, no, I see how the thing works. The man came and he was here and things happened and they'd send him home. When he called the woman of God, she said to him, Whatever you learn in the States, apply that to your life. You will make it. Somebody said, I will make it. Somebody said, I will make it. I will use what I learn and apply it to my life. It's the same thing goes for your prayer life. You are coming here daily. You are receiving prayer points in the middle of the night. You call your pastor. The phone is dead. They didn't turn it off. It is dead. So now it's your time to pray. Now it's between you and that demon that you have been fighting in your house. The demon that enter your child. The demon that enter your spouse. My God, some people won't call you until a certain time to provoke your spirit. Let me tell you something, people of God. Whatever you learn here. You might not know me personally. You might never get to meet me personally. But I came to tell you, apply it to your life. It will work for you. Why? Because these are teachings straight from the word of God. All you need is to walk with God. Just trust and obey the word, the truth. Jesus said it, they shall know the truth and the truth shall make them free. Once you're staying in prayer, stay prayed up. When trouble come, I came to tell you, the devil will never be able to handle you. When trouble comes, people have got this is so good. It's just ginger and lemon. It's good. It boosts your immune system and, and it makes you feel good too. Hallelujah. It's like soul, soul food. Hey, people have got, when you are boosting your prayer life, just like I'm boosting my immune system now, when you are boosting your prayer life and trouble come, you say, listen, I got this. I got this devil. I got this. You, you, you touch me at the right time. I got this. And you begin to deal with 
the devil in the spirit because you are in training right now many of you don't know the reason why the lord assigned you to this platform is for training day you are in training you are in, you're always going to be in training when the disciples were walking with jesus it was not until late he told them that he was going to leave Peter wasn't satisfied. Peter said, this cannot happen. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you go somewhere and it's only a one-shot deal. This is why we have conference. And people pay to enter conference. Because all that you learn in a day, maybe a couple of hours, the conference maybe three or four hours, you apply it to your life or you apply it to your ministry and watch what God will do. You're getting things that are 90% of what the Lord is using me to do here is placing you in position for your ministry, for your business, giving you things that you can, tools that you can apply to your life daily. These are teachings that in some ministries, you have to pay for it. But it's a gift that the Lord gave me. I'm saying it because it's true. These are tools that people charge. Because I remember I pay good money to go to conference just to sit down and listen to things that I already know. Because I thought they were going to be something different. Once I got there, the Lord said, why did you do this? I already gave this to you. So I'm here to share this information. It's free. Apply these principles to your life. People of God, nothing lasts forever. If I die tonight, remember, I hope, I pray you're taking notes. None of us are here forever. The work that you do will live on. So if you're doing good work, it will live on. When you go to the Lord in prayer, don't go with my name. Go with your problems. Because God already know my name. So when you go to the, Jesus, I don't know who God is using me to talk to, but I came to talk to some people, people that will never get a chance to get close to me. Why? Because of their location. It's not because of something you did, but it's because of your location, where you are located. You see, God allows some things to happen. A lot of people are bashing the pandemic, but God allows some things to happen. Some people were lost. Some people were fooled. Some people were uh, uh, under influence. Some people were, you know, under some demonic influences because they were told, don't follow certain platform. It's demonic. It's witchcraft. If somebody tell you, don't follow any other platform, it's witchcraft. If somebody tell her don't visit somebody else's church, it's witchcraft. You have to test the spirit. How are you going to test the spirit? How will you know the truth? How will you know if where you are is where you belong? People of God, listen to me. You can fool some people sometimes. But you cannot fool all the people all the time. I say this daily. There are a lot of people that God have blessed with wisdom. And they need to know the word. That's why they end up into certain areas. We cannot fool people because God will charge us. So I came today to tell somebody, go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. God is saying, many of you here are called to operate in leadership level. But you are not getting the food and the tools you need to take you there. So when this, pre this opportunity presents itself, you are not prepared. And this is why it makes some people intimidated. Because they are not in training. Hallelujah. A lot of people are not in training. And they are called for leadership. I'm not just talking ministry now. I'm talking leadership. That is a whole nother level. They won't train you. A lot of people won't train you. They... Let me drink some tea. You see, 
a man's gift according to the word of God. A man's gift make room for him among great men. You can't come to a platform every day and you're not learning anything. We pray, but you need food. Food that you can share when you go to work. Some people, they come and they say, oh my God, I just love the way how you're, you're passionate about the things of God. And you say, well, you know, I've been following this platform and I'm learning some things. I've discovered some things. And this is what, it's called wisdom. It's called knowledge. Because right now I'm sharing knowledge for you to apply wisdom. That's what makes you powerful. That's what makes you powerful. What we do here is free. Others are charging. And the reason why it have to be free, because God is doing a new thing in this season. Whenever there is something to pay for, pay for it with confidence. Why? Because you are getting quality food. You're getting leadership training free. You're... <laughs> You're getting food. So I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, be obedient to God. Amen. I said this earlier. When John, okay, let's stay in the Old Testament. When Elijah came, he came and he spent most of his time in the wilderness seeking the face of God and doing what is right. People were afraid of him because he was very powerful. He was very outspoken. The spirit of boldness was always upon him. We're talking about Elijah, the man that called fire from heaven to burn up some people that were lived with a king. The king got sick and he wanted to, to <laughs> the king got sick and he wanted to find out if there is an obia man that can tell him if he was going to die. So he sent his men, 50 of his men, to go and find out from the Obia man if he, I'm talking Bible, I'm in the book of Kings. And God showed this vision to Elijah, the prophet. Elijah send and tell the king that God said to tell you that he is not dead. Why are you as a king sending to seek witchcraft? What's wrong with you? Because as a king, you are supposed to seek the face of God for your illness. So he sent these men to Elijah instead. Elijah said, I'm not coming down there. I call fire from heaven. And fire came down from heaven and burned up these 50 men. Fire came down. So he sent another 50. And Elijah called fire again because he was, he was so passionate about the things of God. He couldn't handle the hypocrisy. He couldn't handle the wickedness because this king was not of God. You see, this is when, when you get leadership position and you're not qualified, you will allow the devil to run your house. So leadership position takes training. So if you get a position and you're not, tra you're not trained for it, you're not aware of what you're supposed to do, you're going to make a mess of things and give other people a bad name. We need to have the right training in order to walk into our calling. Because when God calls you, he equips you. And this is equipment. When God calls you, he will equip you. Where there is a vision, there is provision. So when God is saying that I'm calling you to do something, I will direct you to the right people who can fix you, who can help you to grow. I'm going to say this one more time. When Moses was about to lose his life because God told Moses straight up, I'm going to kill you because of your disobedience. So train Joshua because Joshua will take on for you. So Moses trained up Joshua. And when Moses died, they mourned. 
But Moses knew he was going to die because of his temper, his ignorance. People of God, when, you, when God calls you, you got to shed some old skin. Somebody said, I'm going to drop my bad habit. I'm going to change my ways. I am going to move in faith. My God. When God called you, he equip you. And how he equip you? He sent you to the right people that he already blessed to a certain level to help you to grow. And this person will have to be honest to you. Number one, if you have a leader who is 100% honest, even if it hurts, they will tell you that you're wrong. Listen to me. You belong there. Why? Because if you are playing games, God will charge you. We don't need people to tell us things we want to hear. We need people to tell us things that is good for us. We don't need anybody to lie to us. So you see, God raised up a different breed. Right here is a different breed. God raised up a different breed, a different generation to tell you about yourself, like it or not, because it's not going to stop this, broad, this broadcast from continuing. So if the Lord used me to say something to you, whether you like it or not, that cannot stop this ministry from growing. No. Why? Because you might get angry and get in your feelings and you walk away. But I kid you not, this will continue and it will grow because I have decided that I am determined to continue to the end. Amen? When God used Elijah because he wanted to die, Jezebel threatened him. There are some people that are, have been ordained to destroy ministry. Jezebel was an evil queen. So she wanted to slow down Elijah because he killed some false prophets. I'm throwing some big rocks this morning. And guess what? Elijah wanted to die. God said, oh, so you want to die. And your job is not done. So I'm going to have to find a successor. So he said, go and train up Elisha. Listen to me, people of God. This is why Elisha required a double portion. Because Elijah already set the pace. He was straightforward. He was not friendly. He didn't have any friends. Most of his time was in the wilderness. So Elijah, Elisha had to be radical. He was not friendly either. If you study the Bible carefully, even his right hand man, Jehazi, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, he lied. He lied. Elisha said, Oh, so you went to that man and took his things. The spirit of the Lord that is upon me. Didn't that same spirit follow you to go and take it and tell you not to take it? So take his problems too. So his right hand man got. The leprosy. You see how serious Elisha was? It was because he took double portion from Elijah, his teacher. In my opinion, I don't think that they were finished talking before God snatched Elijah from among Elisha. The Bible said they were just having conversation and talking. And then fire came out of heaven and horses of fire. And it took, Elijah went up in the flames. God took him. So I came to tell the people of God, he wanted to go. He knew he was not going to die. But he couldn't handle the hypocrisy because Jezebel was a hypocrite. She knew that she moved into their territory. So she was supposed to abide by them. What do they say? When you go to Rome, you do as the Romans do. So she was an evil queen, but she moved into Ahab, King Ahab's life. Ahab, Ahab was supposed to be someone who was worshipping God, but she was a disobedient wife. I, I don't know who God is using me to talk to right here, but I'm telling you, it is good. Why? Because we need to be submissive. Hallelujah. We need to put this old flesh under subjection to the word of God. We need to be, yes, we need to submit. 
It doesn't matter what family you came from, what they did in the past. When you move into a territory where the word of God is active and alive, you need to be submissive. Some people, they know. They try to change. They try to brainwash you. They try to trick you. Anybody remember Simon in the book of Acts? I'm just going all over the Bible today because there are some people here that need to hear this. Some people are educated, but they don't know the word of God. And the Bible said, you are living in fear until you know the fear of God. When you fear God, your wisdom begins. So it doesn't matter who teach you what. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It means that you are living in fear. Because you don't have the fear of God. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know who God sent me to talk to. But I'm here with a big old book. Welcome everyone. If you're just joining, welcome to breakfast. And it's kind of sweet. There's a lot of sweetness in this breakfast this morning. I'm talking about leadership. I'm talking about ministry. Because many of you on this platform that are secretly following me are leaders. Many of you are called to leadership. Many of you have been already ordained, but you were not equipped. Let me take some tea. If your leader is not teaching you the truth, you need to pack up and run. If your leader is not rebuking you when you're wrong, you need to run. Because number one, you will fall short daily. It means that you make a lot of mistakes. Don't expect your leader to overlook your mistakes. Because these are mistakes that you will continue to make after you're out there on your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these are mistakes if you continue to be in the flesh and saying that this is how it's done from you were a child you're wrong because many of the people that taught us when we were children they did not know the word of God some of them couldn't read some were ignorant some were still doing it their way hallelujah so listen to me, people of God. God is saying it's time for us to pray. From what the Lord is using me to say here, by now, many of you know it's the truth. Many of you would never hear this anywhere else because they, they want you to feel good. I'm not here to make you feel good. My name is not Pastor Feel Good. I'm here to teach you the truth, something that you can apply to your life. Something that you can apply to your business. Something that you can apply to bring it to your family at night when you pray before you go to bed with them. These are the tools that we need to move forward in life in Christ. You need strong leaders to talk to you. Not to shame you. Not to disgrace you. Not to embarrass you. Not to belittle you. Not to make you feel small. But to teach you the importance of honesty. Because if you're not getting the word in truth, you are getting lost. Simon was down there in Samaria. Fooling these people. Making them think that he was some doing something good for the Lord. When he was practicing witchcraft. And when Simon met up with Philip, Simon got baptized. He realized Philip carried some power to release demons out of people. We're talking the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8. And then guess what happened? Peter heard about it. So Peter went down there with another companion of his. And when he went down there, listen to me, Peter was laying hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. So because Simon was not delivered, Simon said, I'm paying you for some of that anointing so I can use it also. Let me take some tea. I want you to get something here. Simon was a leader, but he was an evil leader. He was a witch doctor. 
He was practicing witchcraft. The Bible called it sorcering. He was using sorcering on these people to intimidate them, to fool them, to control them. So I came to talk to some people here today. Anybody who tell you, don't go to another ministry to test the spirit. They are working with witchcraft because you're not, listen to me. How are you going according to the book of John? How are you going to test the spirit if you don't entangle with another leader? You have to. Even for a day, you have to test the spirit. There is no way to test the spirit. This is why some people said, I'm not going back to church. Because I cannot take the things I found out. Why? You didn't test the spirit. You didn't go anywhere else. You have been with them the whole time. And they brainwash you and trick you and make you think otherwise. But now you meet Peter. And you realize this is what God is really doing. So what was I doing with my life all these years? I can say it's because you didn't test the spirit. And all I can say to you, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And they shall know the truth and the truth shall make them free. Let me take some tea. God want to bless you. God, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, uh, people of God, listen to me. This is a different level of um, preaching. I'm talking to leaders that are here on this platform that God is calling to lead his people. This is preparation. A lot of people have been called to ministry, but they did not get the opportunity that they would receive here. No one taught them because their leaders were just ordained. They were not taught. Some people just got ordained. They were not taught. We're not talking about prophecy. We're not talking about ministry alone. We're talking about leadership. Preparation for leadership. Many of you here, you know yourself. We even have people that are, that are following this platform that have been ordained. But they were not taught. So they are secretly following the ministry. Some people feel embarrassed to even support the ministry because they know me personally. So they won't. But people of God, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for the Lord. Whatever you bless the ministry with, it's not mine. And especially on the 15th of the month. If you supported charity, that's not mine. If you are, it's going to somebody else. If you are sowing a seed into your life, in your ministry, that is for the ministry. The weight that the ministry is carrying. You're, you want to apply this thing to your life and your family. So it's called a seed. If you sow a seed in your life and your children's life, that's not money that I can give to someone else because that's for you and your family. That seed carries a different weight. If you're sowing in someone's life, that is a seed that you're sowing in someone's life. That you And as a matter of fact, as I talk about seed, there, are some, there have been some people who sow in other people's lives. And I was looking at it last night that I, I did not even mention it. Hallelujah. I did not mention it. Hmm. Glory to God. I'm going to do something that I have never done. That the Lord just dropped in my spirit. Somebody saw a $50 seed. And the person was saying, they didn't give me a name. So the Lord just showed me, Sister Kida Passard. Sister Kida, you are a new home owner. I'm sowing this $50 seed in your life that they sent to the ministry. And this thing will hold up your home and be a blessing. It's going to be like a candle in a corner. In your home. This is what this $50 seed will do for your home. 
It's going to be like a burning candle for your blessings. Hallelujah. So, um, yes. So, the Lord told me, he said, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord mentioned you because you just got this home and he wants you to know he loves you. So, this $50 seed was sown in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Someone sown a seed in her husband's. His name is Mr. Errol Nelson. Mr. Errol Nelson, I'm presuming that you are in Jamaica. May the Lord continue to strengthen you and guide you as a man to be the head of your house. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my God. I command blessings to come to you, Mr. Errol Nelson. I don't know you, but a seed was sown in your life for a breakthrough, for deliverance. You will never lack any good thing. I'll come back to you, Sister Kida. Glory to God. Someone else has sown a seed in someone else's life. Yes, someone sow a seed in uh, for $20. Somebody sow a seed into Gemma Jean's life. Gemma Jean, I don't know you because I never see this name presented to me before. So Gemma Jean, my prayer is that God turn things around for you. Glory to God. For the Lord to change your story. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and I declare upon Gemma Jean's life that there will be testimonies. Mighty God, there will be testimonies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sister Angela Mitchell, a five-pound seed was sown on your behalf. I don't know if you are here, but I'm looking at my paperwork and I see five-pound on your name. So I know... Yes, it's a seed that came from England. Someone sow five pound in your life. And I pray over this five pound right now that the Lord will use it to live. I hear the Lord said, exhaust. Hey, Jesus, you're going to blow off all this steam, Sister Angela, that is bubbling up inside of you. And you will be released in the name of Jesus Christ, by this $5 seed, you will be, I decree and I declare, a release upon your life. Sister Angela Mitchell, I decree and I declare a release upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is done. Glory to God. Somebody sowed another seed. Let me see if I can find it. I, I, I don't play when it comes to ministry and, and and finances because a seed is important so your seed cannot be given to someone your seed that you have sown for your life and the life of your family i cannot drop that into charity no thank you holy spirit i can't so Someone sow a seed into someone's life. The person's name is Charmaine Bailey. Charmaine Bailey, a seed of $50 was sown in your life. Charmaine, I'm asking, I don't know if you're watching, I don't know if you're here, but I'm asking God as I stand down the word of God to open all your doors. As I speak the word, Hallelujah. As I speak the word, my God, as I open my mouth and speak the word, Charming Bailey, this $50 seed will be a memorial in your life because you will remember this day because God have done it for you. All your doors, I make declaration upon it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is done. My God. Jesus. And there are some people here who are purposing in their heart and desire to be homeowners. I understand that this ministry is releasing a lot of homeowners. A lot of people are coming to this platform, praying and receiving homes. So for those of you here that have desired to move in your own home, that have desired to be no more tenant, 
Some of you desire to be a landlord. I'm not going to pray for God to give you just one house. I'm going to pray for God to open doors in your life for real estate so you could be home owners of multiple homes. I decree and I declare this word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for your home, for your business. Because some people, that is their business, real estate. So they'll buy homes and fix it up and rent it and flip it. So I'm praying, my God, for those of you that are following this platform, that desire, some have sown seed. I'm praying for God to open these doors in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth upon every seed and every word. My God, for these doors to be open in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm praying upon it. I decree and I declare it done. My God, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is done. There are some people that have desires to be married and they are secretly following this ministry. My prayer for you to find a divine spouse, for this spouse to locate you. You are here on this platform. You are faithfully coming. You're not asking for prayer requests. You're not asking for anything, but you are purposing in your heart that God will locate you and release it. Here I am today. As I raise my hand in agreement with you, I pray for the, our divine spouse in your life. I pray for a peaceful marriage upon your life. I'm praying right now for a woman of God in your life. If you are here as a man seeking, desiring to be married, for God to open heavens and release that woman in your life that you desire. For an honest, a loyal, a faithful woman of God. Hey, Shata, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And for these ladies that are here single, looking to be married, I pray for heaven to open up right now for that mighty man of God. Hey, Jesus, I hear somebody said, I cannot handle it, but I'm asking for it. God said, I will equip you. God said, I will equip you for that man of God. You're asking for a man of God. Even though you can't handle a man of God. But I hear the Lord said, I will equip you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is done. Glory to God. Jesus, I'm praying for some people that are sick in their body. Hallelujah. Ya Rabba Kushaya. The other day I prayed for these two men and I got confused because they have the first same first name. And I went back to my records and I was looking. People of God, if you send one penny to this ministry, I write it down and I write your name next to it. Because there are times that I will need to go back and pray for you again. So I'm using your money as a point of contact. Because that's all I will have with your name here. I can only know this because this is your information. So today I'm praying for Mr. Errol Smith for healing and deliverance. Mr. Errol, wherever you are located right now, as heaven open up healing, I release divine healing upon you. You will never die before your time. You will never die without completing what you have to do. I pray right now for Errol Smith, people of God, join me in prayer. Come in agreement with me in prayer and declare healing upon this man's life. Errol Smith, I pray for you right now for a sudden change in your life for a turnaround to take place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the name that's above every name. I decree and I declare healing, divine healing, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Glory to God. Matoroboko Sashataya. Hey, Sata, I'm making declaration upon people's lives, upon their requests, upon their seeds. I'm talking, people of God, listen to me. Hi, 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 hi. Somebody said, I come in agreement. 
Listen to me. Elaine Forbes, I'm making a declaration upon you. I'm making a declaration that your doctor will su be surprised because of what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. I'm making this declaration. Carol Empress, may your store basket never be empty. May you never lack any good thing. Darren Wade, maybe Koroboku Shabakrosataya. I make this declaration before this year is out. There will be a blessing in your home. Darren Wade, I make this declaration out there in New York. I'm calling it out and I'm calling it done. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Hmm. It is well. It is well. I just came to tell some people this morning that it will be well with you. I came this morning to talk to some people to let them know. The Lord said I should tell you it will be well with you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God. Yes, Mr. Errol Smith. Mr. Errol Smith, I'm making this declaration upon his life for healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. He will never lose his mind. He will never lose. Mr. Errol Smith, he will never lose his cognitive skills. I'm saying it. I'm making a, dec a declaration upon his life. He will never lose his cognitive skills. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Glory to God. Once again, I just want to say, people of God, listen. You see, God is doing a new thing. We are in a new month. It's the beginning of the year. And we have to move in faith. We need our breakthrough. We need our blessings. We have to move in faith. You see, God don't make mistakes. And God has never lied to us. And he will never give us more than what we can handle. So if you're going through something that it's more than what you can handle, it's not from God. Because God will never put something on you without making preparation for it glory to god yes so you see this is it <laughs> we thank god for his goodness and his mercies somebody said i'm late you're gonna have to go back and watch this broadcast people of god today is the 12th day of the month and i encourage you to be obedient on the 15th of the month, we will be blessing four people with cash. Hallelujah. And I encourage you to support the ministry so the ministry can release it. I'm asking for your donations. We will be blessing four people. And I'm asking you for your donations so we can do the work of the Lord. I encourage you to be obedient, people of God, so the work of God can continue. Don't hold back. This is a time when God is saying, you need your breakthrough, but you got to be faithful. God is saying, you're asking me to do something for you. So support the ministry so my work can get done. Healing you and setting you free is not a problem. God is saying in this time, whatever you desire, he will give it to you. 
but his work has to continue. Tishana Gordon. The Lord said, no more disappointments. Tishana Gordon. I hear the Lord said, I should tell you, no more disappointment. He is going to fix some things and bring it back to you. Whatever it is, the Lord is speaking to me about you. He is going to fix some things and bring it back to you. Tishana. I don't know you, and you don't know me. But I hear the Lord said, I should tell you this thing. That he is going to surprise you. He said, no more disappointment. I don't know your story. We have never spoken. I've never seen you before, so welcome. Glory to God. Maybe you've been here before, but I've never actually seen you. It is done. The Lord said he's doing it. I decree and I declare this upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. People of God, all you need to do is live right and do the right thing. Live right. Live clean. Don't let the devil rob you. You see, when God sent the prophet to the widow, again, I'm talking about Elijah. When God sent Elijah to the widow woman, her husband dead. She have one child. But God, God sent Elijah to the woman for the woman to feed him. And all the woman had was some meal and a little bit of oil. She didn't have anything. But the woman began to complain. I'm saying something here and I want you to get it. The woman began to complain. And Elijah said, if you just give me something to eat first, you will never lack. You will never have to worry because there will be more than enough food. You will never be disappointed. And the woman was obedient. Eventually, you know, Elijah had to prophesy. Some people want you to work for something that God tell them to give you. No, I don't do that. Once the word come out of my mouth, that's it. Elijah had to, he was hungry because he was coming from the brook of Cherit that dried up. There was no food, so ravens were feeding him with, with meat and bread. And he was drinking from the brook. So the birds didn't come back. The, the brook dried up. And now God said, go to Zarephath. To that widow woman and she will sustain you. The woman didn't have anything. So what he went and saw was nothing. But he began to prophesy in the woman's life and tell her, once you cook, it's going to be increased. So she said, I don't think that's going to happen because I don't have anything to feed you. All I have is a handful of meal and a little bit of oil in a cruise. So when I use this, we're just going to eat it and die. The moral of the story here is the woman eventually feed him. She ate and for days there was food. So the thing increased. God increased it. The word came to pass. But then her son died. Her son died because she spoke that thing in existence. Be careful what you say about your life. Be careful what you receive in your spirit. When that little boy died, guess what happened? Elijah was still in her house. So he lift up the child and took him and pray for him. And he came back to life. Now, if she was disobedient to God, didn't feel, feed Elijah, turn him away, she probably would have died too. Because the son died and then she began to say, oh, so you're a man of God. She didn't believe all he was saying until her son came back to life. He didn't kill her son. She did. Because of what she said. We have to be careful of the things that we are prophesying over our life. We look for people to prophesy to us. But yet what comes out of our mouth, it's negative towards our husband, towards our wives, towards our children, towards our ministry, towards our business, towards our finances. Be careful what you say. Because when you speak against a certain ministry, you're speaking against your life. Because that is the same ministry God is going to use to bless you.
That is the same ministry that God will use to bless you. Glory to God. It's the same ministry you speak against. You cannot kick against rock. You will lose your foot. Some people refuse to be a blessing. And they are the ones that need the breakthrough. Elijah could have gone somewhere else to get food. But he was obedient. He stayed. Because God sent him. He was on a mission. For the Lord. But guess what happened? His presence was necessary. His presence was necessary because when the child died, when her son died, the same son who she said, we're just going to eat this little bit of cornmeal and die. Hey, he died. What you going to do now? You begin to blame the man of God. And you are the one who speak death in your house. Be careful. Welcome and good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to breakfast with Jesus. I don't know who God sent me here, but if you are just joining, in order for you to get this message, you're going to have to go back and watch it from the beginning because it's very, this message is some very important words that God is releasing in this time upon his people. Elaine Bennett, I pray for you. That's the name? I'm not sure. Elaine Bennett? Elaine Bennett, I cover you. God keep dropping this name in my spirit for so long. And uh, Babuku Shatabako Sataya. Uh, uh, Elaine Bennett. Is, is somebody here by that name? May the Lord do a new thing in Elaine's life. May the Lord do a new thing in her life. Sister Steele, what is your mother's name? The Lord is going to touch her shoulder. Sister Steele, the Lord is going to touch your mother's shoulder. I, I don't know if something is wrong with the shoulder, but I hear the Lord said, I'm resting my hand upon her shoulder. He said he's taking her burden away. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and I declare upon that woman right now. I decree and I declare upon her life. May the Lord do more than touching the shoulder. Lord, touch her head. Lord, touch her head also. Peter said, don't just wash my feet. Wash my head. My God, Lord, touch her head right now. Mighty God. Somebody say you're speaking the truth, Pastor. What is the truth, woman of God? What is the truth? May the Lord touch her head also, not just the shoulder. You see, the Bible says we can speak things into existence. Declare a thing, it will come to pass. Jesus. Hey, I don't know what's wrong with her shoulder, but I see the Lord touching her shoulder. And he said, I'm resting my hand upon her shoulder. Glory to God. The Lord is still working in this family. Hallelujah. The Lord is somebody you're here and you're, you're here for the first time, but your faith is lifted. I don't know what you heard. But I hear the Lord said, you are here on this platform for the first time and your faith is lifted. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, Elijah said to Elisha, you are asking me for a double portion. I cannot give you a double portion. I cannot give you anything. Only God can give it to you. So the only way you can receive it is when I leave. Hallelujah. The only way you can receive a breakthrough 
you can receive your double portion that you're asking God for is if you are walking in truth. There are certain mantle you won't be able to carry unless you are walking in truth. And we cannot fool God. We fool ourselves when we lie, when we cheat, when we are dishonest. We fool ourselves because God already knows what's in our heart. Shame on the devil. God already knows what's in our heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Spirit, Ivan Bennett. Oh, okay. That's your mother. <laughs> yeah, the Lord placed her in my spirit. I got to be, you see, I just got to drop what he said out here. It's not for me. The gift is not for the person that's, it's not for the person that's carrying it it's for the person that will receive a word will receive the message so the the prophetic gift is not for the yeah, carrier it's for the recipient it's for those that will receive you are the ones that will benefit from the gift that god has given me that's my mom pastor ivan bennett oh the lord said he's touching her right shoulder <laughs> i don't know why this still is thing this still is still here with me he said he's touching her right shoulder and I'm praying for the Lord to touch her head as well. Just like Peter. He said, Lord, don't just wash my feet. Wash my head. Beard me, Jesus. Just pour water all over me, Jesus. That's what Peter was basically saying. Jesus, don't just wash my foot. I'm not worthy just for foot washing. Pour water all over me, Holy Ghost. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sister Debbie Everslade, the Lord said I should tell her, stop worry. You worry too much. It's not so bad. <laughs> Sister Debbie Everslade, stop worry. The things that are coming at you to make you worry, it's distraction. Greater days are ahead of you. Stop worry. Somebody is talking, saying, this thing, some people don't value the platform. Every day, Rev. Joyce didn't bring the truth. Doctrine, I pray that they start to value. Well, a lot of people won't be able to see me because there are some people that won't be able to come back. Her head, her head, shoulder, and back. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> We thank God for his goodness. You see, God speaks. God is speaking. People of God, God is speaking. She's saying it's her mother, and it's the shoulder, the head, and the back. And I was asking God not to also touch the head, but touch the head as well, the shoulder. Not just to touch the shoulder, because I, I see the Lord standing with his hand on her shoulder, and she's not even aware of it. And the Lord said, I'm lifting her burden. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, I'm taking her burden. Oh, God. Sister Denisha Dallas, the Lord is going to do something for you. I don't even know if you're here on this platform this morning. Yes, I see you. The Lord said he's going to do something for you. Danisha Dallas, a door is going to be open for you. The Lord is saying, I'm going to open a door. A door. What is a door? A door is an entrance to another territory. That is a door. Because if God opens it, then you don't have to touch it. You just enter into a different zone. And God is saying, I'm going to open a door. It means that you are going into something. What God is fixing. My mom... It's on the, God will do it for her. 
God will do it. I decree and I declare healing in her life in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare healing in this woman's life. People of God, let me share something with you about life. Sometimes we were born in some family that needs deliverance. And, and what the Lord is showing me, I'm speaking out of respect. Maybe, maybe not. She may or she may not could have been my mother. So I'm going to have to talk to her as a mother. She's here. Sometimes we were born in family. I'm using wisdom here because the Lord is speaking to me. We were born into family that need deliverance and breakthroughs and they didn't receive it at the time. And this woman was born into a family that needed to be set free. There was not a lot of covenant with God. The Lord is talking to me, even though she could probably, maybe not be my mother, but I see her as a child in the spirit. And because of her upbringing, the way she was raised up, she suffered. Hey, Makoraba, the woman suffered. And it's because of the family that she came from. She suffered as a young woman. I'm not talking about a, 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 an adult. As a young woman, innocent, she suffered. And all her problems came from her childhood. All her childhood years was hardship. And it's spiritual. So she may have grown up in a home with money, but spiritually she was oppressed. Spiritually, yes. And, and this is why as she got older and have kids and her life never changed much. Because of her past. She, it's not something that she did. It, it, it's in her family. But I pray for every burden to be lifted from this woman in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because all that her problem is, is her childhood years. She missed out. She missed out. She missed out. She missed out as a young girl. She missed everything as a young girl. That's what happened. And she will testify. She will. She will. I decree and I declare this today. She will testify. Devil, you are a liar. She will testify in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are an Ivan Bennett. You are an Mm, 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 Elaine Bennett, you are no different from that woman in Jamaica that gave her life to the Lord at an old age. You will testify, I decree and I declare it done. The Bible said Jesus Christ was sitting in the midst of doctors and teachers at the age of 12. And right now, I'm sitting in the midst of this woman. When she was young. She was called to greatness. When when she was young. Listen to me. Hallelujah. But I came to tell somebody here today. Hey. Somebody said my mom has gone through so much. Yes. You see. It's not her adult life. That is her problem. It's not something that she did as a young girl. It is, <laughs> it's the family that she came from. And in today's society, we call it generational curse. In today's society, based on tradition and things, we call it a curse from her grandparents or great grandparents it's the family that she came from so she was born into burden 
because I keep hearing the word burden. The woman was born into burden. She was born into hardship. And it's not money hardship. She was born into, born into a time. My God, my God, my God. She was born into a time when all they do was look up and, and, and speak and, 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 and speak into things. She was born into hardship. So she said, yes, she have. Yeah, if your mother is willing to tell you the truth, she was born. Somebody already told her that. Glory to God. This is just a confirmation. The Lord is saying that the lady was born. I'm, I'm very respectful with this prophetic word because she is an elder for me. She was born into hardship. And she has never been set free. All her life. So this is why her past haunts her. If you sit down and talk to her, she'll tell you. But I release heaven upon her life today. That she will testify in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ivan Bennett, you will testify. Ivan Bennett, you will share your testimony. People will hear. Your, yes, Pastor, you are speaking the truth. Yes, because I, I am in a home in Jamaica. And the Lord is saying, this is where she was born. This is where she was raised up. This is the family home. Hey, hey, but the Lord is good and merciful. I thank God for your life. I thank God for her life. And I thank God for her. She's about to make a change because the hand of the Lord is so strong upon her life right now. And the change is because of what she has seen in her daughter. She's about, this is prophetic and powerful. She is about to make a change because of the change that she has seen in her daughter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Upon this family, I decree and I declare every word done. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's done. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, my God. I thank God for the prophetic. It was not just a money thing in her life. It's spiritual. So she was born into spiritual hardship. Your mother was not even supposed to be born. Sister Steele, I'm, what I'm trying to say here, if you, if you know the family story, your mother was not supposed to be alive. She was not even supposed to give birth. She was not even supposed to have children. That's how far back this thing go. But God has kept her. But the devil in the midst of everything is fighting the woman. And this is why as a young woman, she's not healthy. Because she should have been dead the moment she decided to give birth. Yes. She was never supposed to have children. But you will know. Because she will tell you. And she will also tell other kids. Because she have to speak. She have to. In order for this thing to go away from the family. She's going to have to speak. She's got a lot inside of her. It's her childhood bringing up, Pastor. You hit the nail on the head. You are absolutely correct. Yes. So she will tell you guys, as but you you know just just listen. Don't question her. Just listen, and she will say it. It's done. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to God. Pastor, she have told me everything that she have gone through growing up as a child. She went through hell. It's her, it's her, um, it's not her, uh, uh, it's not as an adult. It's nothing to do with having children. It's none of those things. It's not about relationship with men. It's none of those things. 
it goes back to her as a child. You see how powerful the word of God is. You see, the Holy Spirit is very inquisitive. God is not showing me anything about her relationship. Nothing, none of those. God is not showing me her as a mother having children. None of those. She was not even supposed to have children. That's how the devil had her. The demon in the family. This woman was like, as a child, she was like Abraham. Like John the Baptist. Move all over as a young person. Move all over like a nomad. Yeah. But if I had the wings of a dove. If I had the wings of a dove. I would fly, fly away, fly away, yeah, and be at rest. I hear the song in my spirit. If I have a wing, if I have a wing. <laughs> oh God, but since I have no wing, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. If I had the wings of a dove, my God. Hey, that woman is going to testify. Thank you, Jesus. She will testify in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. She will testify and the devil cannot stop it. I decree, declare testimony out of that woman. Testimony. My God. She will testify. I would fly, fly away, fly away, and be at rest. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen to me, people of God. When you come here and if the Lord is speaking about someone, it's not a joke, it's not comedy, it's people's life. It's not for somebody to write it down and go pray against it or anything. It's for you to understand that God is moving and people are receiving their breakthroughs and their deliverance. When you are called to ministry, you are called with burden. Ministry is not an easy chair to sit up into to minister. Ministry is burden. Ministry is heavy load. So I encourage you, don't take anything for granted. And if you were, stop. Stop taking ministry for granted. Because ministry come with burden. The true servant of God. Go under pressure daily. Because many times when the word of God comes, after the word of God comes and that person is no longer on social media, the devil attack them and ask them, why you pray for these people? So ministry bring burden. The reason why some people cannot pray for you. After her mother had her, she tried to throw her in a pit toilet. Thank God for my grand uncle, which her mother, brother, that saved her. Hey, hey, the Lord showed me that when she was young, she was not even supposed to be here. She was not even supposed, people have got to read this testimony. And this has nothing to do with me. The Lord only took me to her childhood. Thank the Lord for saving grace. Okay. See? It's about her childhood. It's a, it affects her mentally. Listen to me. You see, one of the things I share here all the time is how I was molested, how I was raped multiple times. 
by men and women when I was a girl, young, innocent. A lot of things happened. And if you're not delivered and set free, these things can hold you in bondage for life. We all have our problems and it came in different ways. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody's problem is different. So don't come here and take anybody's testimony for a joke. It might not have been what you have gone through, but it's their chapter. It's their book. It's their truth. It's their life. Somebody said, I can relate to that reverend. I was sent all over to live with different family members. Hello, present. You just call my name, present. When, when, when the abuse couldn't go on any longer in the home, they sent me to visit family and my dad. And, and that's where my stepsister took disadvantage of me. Hello. But here I am today. I'm alive. God kept me for the fact that he want me to testify because a lot of people have gone through so much. Uh -huh. A lot of people. First time on your program. God bless you. God bless you too, my sister. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. My name is Reverend Joycelyn Radigan. And I pray that you come back. The Lord told me that so, somebody was here for the first time and that person faith had been lifted. And I hear the Lord said, it's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We see God moving daily. We see God doing things daily. You see, we, we have learned to embrace nomads. And the word nomad means people that move all over the place. From That's why they talk about Abraham. But Abraham was not the only nomad in the Bible. John was not. Elijah was not. A lot of people are nomads. Look at Paul. He was on a mission for the Lord. He couldn't even get into a relationship. He was a nomad. Hallelujah. There is no shame. No, because God, you're not that person. You see, this is the thing that we love about salvation. And this is the thing that we love about God. He is the one. He's the game changer. If it had not been for the Lord who is on your side, Sister Steele, you would have died already. So even you being alive is a testimony in your family. I said, even you, Sister Steele, being alive, walking around on your grave, living in the land of the living, it's a testimony because you should have been dead a long time ago as well. Before you make it to the United States, let me tell you what God is showing me. You were not supposed to be into the United States. You should have been dead. The enemy came many times for you as a child, but God kept you. So, you see, there are some reasons why we are here. It's called ministry. It's called ministry, people of God. If you didn't go through anything, you cannot minister to me. If you didn't go through anything, you cannot minister the word of God to me. Why? Because I know where God take me from. And in order to minister to certain people, you have to go through some storms. So God placed pastors in your life that can teach you and feed you with wisdom and knowledge. According to Jeremiah chapter 3. He said, I give you pastors according to my heart. So if you didn't go through anything, there is no way you can minister to me. Why? Because of the things that I've gone through. My mother used to minister. My grandmother was a prophetess. She prophesied every day at midday. And all her prophetic words came to life. Why? Because the truth was in her. So if you didn't go through any storms, I, I don't know about you, but there are many times I sit in a congregation and I don't feel the Holy Spirit. 
and there's nothing I can say. I don't feel the Holy Spirit, and it's not because I'm not in the Spirit. It's because of whosoever is bringing forth the Word of God is not in their truth. And because of what's in me, I already taste the Spirit once I enter the building. You don't have to minister to me for me to test your spirit because of the truth that's in me. So I encourage you, people of God, anybody who told you that you cannot go to another platform and hear the word of God, they are practicing witchcraft. They don't want your eyes to be open. They don't want you to know the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You will always come back because you know, oh, you know what? That woman of God with the glasses. She, yes. I remember she said something. And I'm thinking about it. And it's true. They want to control you. To brainwash you. So you don't get exposed to the truth. People need to be free and delivered. And the only way you can be free and delivered is when the truth hits you like a ton of bricks. You will repent. You will begin to repent when you hear the truth. Somebody said, the woman of God, cover her right now. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Many times I come here and pray for people. I don't get to sleep at night because the demons that they are fighting attack me. But devil never win. Devil can never win. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, and this is why you have to understand because of the power of the prophetic that is upon my life. My life has not been easy. And the devil know what I was going to be. So he tried to take me out many times. He tried to disgrace me in the community that I grew up and I came from. They used to belittle my name. And these were the plans of the enemy. But God snatched me. Yes. And keep me alive. And rebrand me. And he gave me something. That when I open my mouth. I cannot hide it. It shows. Because if you study the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 40. He said he put a new song in my mouth. So when you open your mouth. Your words won't be the same. Hallelujah. So I thank God for each and every one of you. Somebody said, I've gone through hell as a child growing back in Jamaica. I am grateful that what God have done in my life, where he have brought me through. Yeah, you were not even supposed to be in America. The devil came for you many times. It's the grace of God that kept you. Yep, but it is well. It is well. Somebody, I believe, I believe Rev, very true. Mm -hmm. Some people don't carry the spirit with them or the anointing. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. It is well. I'm just reading the comments. People have got to listen to me. My time is up. Your platform is anointed truth, no sugar coating. It's the real truth. Amen. Amen. People of God, you know, it's a great thing to serve the Lord. But some people never made it to their calling because their life was cut off short. A lot of people that were called to leadership, they die early. They died young. You know? When you die young, that does not mean that you're not going to heaven. You just die prematurely. But if you are not saved, then you're not going to heaven. If you're saved and you're living your life to please God and you die young, 
you're not going to hell. You just die before your time. But if you were not saved and you die young, hey, you're going to hell. It's true. It is true. It's, it's written in the Bible. So I encourage your people of God. It is well. It is well. There is no secret that God can do. What he has done for me, he can do it for you. The Lord loves you so much that he will use me to share my, my dirty testimony. You see, people will judge you because of your testimony. They won't talk to you because of the life that you lived. You're no longer that person. Your past does not define you. Your past cannot define you. The things that you have gone through, it cannot define you. Because God kept you this far, you're no longer that person. You are now a new being. You're a new man. You took those old garments off. And this is why it's not good for us to go back to our past. Because the past is not good. If it was good, God wouldn't change your life. If you're going back into the past, make sure you're taking, you're going back to snatch some people out of the fire, out of the pit. And said, I know what you're going through because I used to be in this position. So if you are going back into something that you used to be, and it, it, you got to be going back there to move some people, to win souls for the kingdom of God. The only way you go back is when you're going to win souls. To encourage them to come to Christ. To make that step of faith and come with you. Amen. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. Whatever the Lord touch your heart to do for this ministry, I encourage you to use the number 860-634-8557. You could use Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle and do your transaction. Hallelujah. If you are in the Caribbean and you don't know how, you can contact me on WhatsApp with 860-634-8557 and I will give you that information. Thank you. Sometimes I just sound like a broken record that never made it to the studio. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, I can relate. Yeah. God love you. And this is the reason why he allow you to be here to hear these things and get these words and messages to strengthen you, to let you know that your past is no longer who you are. You are no longer that person. You are no longer living that life. You are moving on to better and greater things and you will be doing more for the Lord. Because once you were blind, now you can see. And now you understand that you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of this world. Let your light shine. Don't dim your light to please anybody. If you can sing, sing for Jesus. If you can write, write for Jesus. If you know how to speak well, to roll your tongue and be proper or to be eloquent, do it for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Don't change who you are because you're ashamed of what God did. You see, this is the thing. I used to suppress my gift because I know I was different. I was treated different as a child. I suppressed it because the enemy tried to shut me up when I was young. Silence me. Yes. So now, sometimes I can't believe that my skin is flawless because when I was young, I was loaded with rash and all kinds of ringworm and all kinds of stuff. I did not know I got flawless skin. I didn't know all those things are gone because these are the things that the devil wants you to believe that you are nothing, you are nobody. But I came today to tell you, Come out of what you're doing if it's not of God. If God doesn't get glory from it, somebody open your mouth and pray. Oh God, take your glory from my life. Open your mouth and declare it. Oh God, take your glory from my life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. Open your mouth and declare it. Ask God to take glory 
Somebody said radical woman of God. I have to be radical because there were many times when a gun was to my head when I'm getting raped and I couldn't talk. So all my anger was transformed into my spirit. I was bitter. I just didn't say anything. Because I know one day I will get older and I will have a voice. One day I will get older and I will have a voice. Yeah, bad man. Rape me. <laughs> but I'm here. The devil is a liar. I'm here. Most of them are dead. Some are still dead in sin. Some repent. I don't know where they are. Set me up, try to get me killed. Oh dear, but I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. No one can judge me. I am. You see, there's a song that says, I am a new creature. I am a new man. You are a new person in Christ. He that is in Christ is a new creature. So no one can judge you. Because according to the word of God, you dip. And the moment Christ took your charges, he paid your debt. What? Paul used to kill. He was a murderer. And when God called him, oh my God, Paul, he never touched a woman. He became a virgin. He was no longer a killer. He slay in the spirit because he was radical. He speak things into existence. When he pray, chains break in jail. So he was slaying in the spirit. That's what you call slay in the spirit. Things of God happen before your very eyes. You speak it and so shall it be. You speak it and so shall it be. Glory to God. He used to kill, but then he started to slay in the spirit. I don't know who God sent me to talk to, but I just want you to know to humble yourself and watch God. Humble yourself and watch God. I came to tell her, the Lord loves you. And this is why he had me talking, talking, talking like this. He loves you. The Lord loves you. Yes, your testimony brings people to Christ. Because they, what they will say is, if, if you can go through all of that and you forgive them, I can do it too. So you see, momentarily, I got to talk about the darkness that I was in. How the devil had me. Because there is always somebody new watching. They don't even have to present themselves here. There is always somebody new watching. Watching the life from afar. To receive their deliverance. And now is the time that I will say, go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. Go ahead and share it. And let God have his way in your life. And if this message has blessed you, go ahead and be a blessing. My time is up. I have to go. The Lord loves you. If this message has blessed you, I encourage you to bless the ministry. On the 15th of the month, we are going to give money to four people on this platform right here. And this, the 15th of this month is this Friday. Hallelujah. So in the evening, I will be making those announcements. And I'm going to also need some people to come on and pray with us on the live just to pray over the money, that's it. It's already blessed. But you see, when it comes to giving funds out of a ministry, it needs a certain prayer. It needs prayer from the saints who are going to receive it. Amen? Yes. People take this for a joke. It's not a joke. God wants to show some people that I'm still giving out gifts, tangible gifts. Amen. If you are in need of a Bible, we have free Bible. The ministry can mail it out to you. If you are in need of women's clothes, but you have to be size four, size five and under. <laughs> They're very small, tiny people clothes. Amen. 
we got some women's shoes left size 10 and size 7 i think just use that number at the bottom of the screen and let me know this the clothes are free the bible is free but we have t-shirt we have prayer shawl we have anointing oil and those are not free and these things came from israel so i encourage you to order what you need and if you don't if you are not in need of anything at all i'm asking you to support the ministry so we can at least ship the boxes to the people that are asking for stuff if you are here and God has blessed you and the ministry has blessed you, I'm encouraging you to be a blessing. Amen. Have a wonderful day.